Are you looking to set up your Power Automate desktop flow to be able to run from the cloud? Are you not sure where to get started? Are you getting an error when you are trying to? Well, good news, you're in the right spot. Today, we're gonna go through the exact steps you need in order to allow multiple tenants to be able to connect inside of your Power Automate desktop flow. All right, here we are at Power Automate Desktop where we are gonna go ahead and set up our machine settings in order to connect this desktop flow out into the cloud to set both of them to run together. Now maybe you're here because you're inside of an RPA in a day course or you just have this set up on your own to, and you wanna be able to run your flow from multiple tenants. So the first step that we need to take is to go ahead and click on settings. Once you select the settings, then you can go ahead and get everything else organized from there. So let's go ahead and click on settings. And now what we want to choose is our machine settings. Right down here in the lower right hand corner, you want to go ahead and select to open the machine settings. This will open up our ability to actually connect our desktop flow out within this environment that you've chosen to add it to. When you select that, what you'll get is this pop up for the Power Automate Machine Runtime application. Now within the Power Automate Machine Runtime app, what you wanna be able to do is select the environment that you want to connect into. Now this environment will be shown within your sign-on that you wanna choose. So make sure you are choosing the correct environment that may have the appropriate licensing structure in order to actually run your desktop flow from the cloud. Now, if you are in an RPA today and you're using one of the trial environments for the developer accounts, this is exactly what you're gonna to want to be able to do in order to be able to fully participate with the rest of the course from this point on. Once you come down here and choose your environment, this is your developer environment in this case for myself, what you will notice is at the top, I'm actually getting an error here all the way at the top that says you're trying to register to an environment that isn't in the registration tenant allow list of this machine. Click on learn more to get information about the registration tenant allow list. Now this learn more button in the top right hand corner, if you select that, that is gonna open up this link right here. Now this link gives you your step-by-step -step directions on exactly what you need to use in order to set up this tenant allow list. What we are gonna do is if we scroll down a little bit here, we are gonna use the allowing specific tenants step here in order to connect not just your general work tenant that you work on with every single day, but also any other type of developer or you know trial or student-based accounts that you're working with maybe within an in-a-day course. So we're gonna go ahead as again, follow along this allowing specific tenants option. Now part of that option is what we need to do is go into our registration editor. Okay, so if you wanna search in your command search down here at the bottom in your menu for regedit, you can go ahead and follow that along. So R-E-G-E-D-I-T, your registration editor, will then bring up this window. Here is my registration editor that I'm working on here. Now in order to navigate down to the exact location for us to set this up, what we wanna do is go to our H key local machine. From there, we want to go to software. Now for some of you, this may already be opened up, but for, for those others, this is the way you wanna get down to it. Inside of our software folder, we're gonna scroll down. You can see here to W0W 6432 node inside of that folder itself we're going to move down to microsoft and then from microsoft we're going to go ahead and find power automate desktop so we'll scroll down even further keep going down in our alphabetical order list and here is power automate desktop now when i go into power automate desktop from here we want the registration folder this is where we're gonna go ahead and set up our tenant switching. 
Now you may already have this option created for yourself. You can see I do have it here for myself as well with a single tenant that I have already been using. But if you don't have this allowed registration tenants option right here, in order to add this, what you're gonna do is select edit and new. And then what you're gonna choose is a string value right here. Okay, so you're gonna choose edit, new, and then string value. Once you select string value, you can name this allowed registration tenants just as I had here. And then once you have that done, we can add in a comma separated list with all of the different tenant IDs that we want to add to our list. Now, if I double click on it, you could see here's how I can add in my comma separated list. Currently, I only have one allowed tenant right there. But if I wanted to add in a second tenant, what I need to do is go to that tenant, grab the tenant ID, and then utilize that right here. Now there are two ways for us to go ahead and find this. And I'm gonna take you through both of them, and I'll let you know which one I think is the easiest way. The first is to come here to make.powerautomate.com within that sign on, within that environment that you're trying to connect into. This will allow you to make sure you're getting to the exact tenant that you want, okay? And here inside of your tenant, okay, within your, uh, your login here at make.powerautomate.com, what we can do is search for the ability to find our tenant ID. Now this one is not as simple as the next, so I'll go with the simple one last year, but we're gonna select Control, Alt, and A, if you do all three of those at the same time, you can come down and you can see all the information that we need about our tenant. So we can now do a control F in order to find our user info. And inside of our user info, once I search for that, you can see I do have the tenant ID available to us to use. There it is, you can copy that out there. Now that's the more difficult way. There is another way in order to do this, and that's simply by, instead of going to make.powerautomate.com, if you utilize your single sign-on here with Microsoft, you can select from your app launcher in the top left-hand corner, and you can go to Power Apps. I'll go ahead and select Power Apps at make.powerapps.com. Make sure I'm going to the same environment. It's not necessary because we are going for the full tenant, but we're gonna just make sure we match up everything here. And from here inside of our uh, site here at make.powerapps.com rather than make.powerautomate.com, if we do the same exact thing, Control Alt A, what we get is a much faster little pop out here that narrows down exactly to the area we want. This is gonna give us our session ID, our session details, and then we can see our tenant ID is right there. Okay, it's one of the first things that pops up for us. In fact, it is the third option for us that we are gonna use. So if you copy out that tenant ID, and it will be the same tenant ID because you're using your single sign-on within that tenant, you can go ahead and copy that and then utilize that within your registration editor. So I'm gonna come on back here, go into my allowed registration tenants that we've just organized, double click on that, and now with a comma, I can now paste in that newly copied out tenant ID. So now you'll notice that I actually have two different tenant IDs in here, one and two, separated by a comma right between them. Now that I have that comma separated list, I can select OK. I can close out my registration editor here, my registry editor. You can see there's again, there's two there. I can come back into my machine settings with my Power Automate Machine Runtime application and go through the process once again. I can select the environment. And now what we should be able to see is a confirmation pop-up at the top. That is gonna be in green, letting us know that we have connected our machine utilizing this machine runtime application. There it is. We now have your machine has been registered. It is connected, which means I now have the ability to run my desktop flow from the cloud.
everything's gonna be all set up here. Again, this is all relative to make sure you have the correct license. I do have the attended RPA mode license here in order to make this connection, in order to run everything. This is, you know, expecting that you do have that license structure all ready to go. And now what I can do is I can actually go up to the cloud. I can close this out, close out my settings. I can minimize this and I'm gonna open up my flow here in the cloud that I have set up. I can actually create a flow. And in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and create a, a quick flow to run my desktop flow. I'll do a very quick instant cloud flow. Then I'll do a run desktop flow. Now I'll put a manual trigger on that and just select create, just to show you that it is connected and is absolutely going to run. And here is my manual trigger. My next step to make sure that my flow is going to run is going to actually run the desktop flow built with Power Automate for desktop. There it is, run a flow built with Power Automate for desktop as my first action. And now because I have that machine connection done, I can connect directly to my machine and I can utilize the machine that I'm connected to. And then I can put in my domain name and username. Now, if you need to know your domain name and username, you can go ahead and use your command prompt, go to CMD within your search menu bar there in your machine, open up your command prompt, just type in who am I? and you will be able to get that response, letting you know your domain, your username, and then you'll have to add in the password to your machine. Okay, so I will go ahead and do that myself. And once you have that connected, you'll now see you have all of the flows that you have built within your desktop flow that are now available for you to go ahead and utilize. So here's my basic flow example. I'm gonna run this in my attended mode. That is relative to the license that I have here. So that's where I can do that. And now I have access to the different input variables that I've created in my desktop flow. So here, I'm gonna put in my username. I'm then gonna put in the date here as well that I just use as my desktop flow variables here and then we can go ahead and save and I'm gonna run the flow just to prove that we are connected, ready to go. Go ahead and test it, a manual test, here we go. And now that the flow is running, you should expect to be able to see the flow working here in just a few moments. Now it is the very first time I'm running this desktop flow, so sometimes it may take a little bit longer than normal. In this case, it might take upwards of 45 seconds or so in order to run this desktop flow, but you should be able to see everything that goes well. There it goes, my flow is running. I do have a pop-up window that goes on a different screen there. I'll show you that it does run here in just a moment. It should be successful here as it does run. Um, and then we'll be ready to go. All right, so you can see that my flow has run successfully, even though you didn't see the actual uh, desktop flow running there, it was happening on another monitor that I have, but you can see here it did run successfully. You'll also be able to see that within the flow itself, that we have the inputs and outputs available to take a look at. So I'll go ahead and show you here on screen. We have our username, we have our date, we have the output, the body of what was actually displayed there. All this is running, the target was connected there, everything works exactly the way we intended that is connected to the cloud. Now, if you'd like to see this a little bit more closely, make sure that that desktop flow is running on the same monitor. If you're only on one screen, obviously that would be a lot easier to see. And the very last thing I wanted to show you here is if you wanted to disconnect this flow or disconnect your machine from this tenant, what you can do is come over here to the monitor area on the left hand side in your navigation pane and you can select on machines. When you click on machines here, you should be able to see all the machines that you're connected into via this tenant. If you would like to disconnect your machine, you can select that and then you can go ahead and choose to delete the machine from your environment here in the tenant that you have it connected to. After that point, if you wanna go back into your registry editor, you can go ahead and remove that machine from there as well. So you can make sure, or that tenant ID from there as well. So you can make sure that it's not running again in the future. Maybe if you're taking a course like RPA in a day and you just wanna make sure everything goes away after the fact. Well, thanks for joining me here as we continue to work with Power Automate, Power Automate Desktop. Hopefully this video helps you out with making that machine connection and setting up your tenant switching so you can connect into multiple tenants within your Power Automate Desktop. 
In this case, we are using a trial environment for RPA in a day, but it may be where you're connecting to multiple tenants at different times. Stay tuned to see more videos coming out with Power Automate and Power Automate Desktop. Thanks again for joining me. See you soon.